what we're going to be talking about today is the structure and function of nucleic acids and DNA. So this picture right here shows you where DNA is located. So DNA is found inside of the nucleus of the cell. And when DNA is all wound up, it forms chromosomes. And the chromosomes have genes on them. And those are the little banded patterns that code for every protein that you have in your entire body. They're the aspects of the DNA that make you, you. They give you your traits, your characteristics, and everything else. And that's why it's important to understand how nucleic acids work and what they are. So let's start with what is a nucleic acid. Nucleic acids are one of the four macromolecules that make up living things. So those are things that we've already talked about. You've got nucleic acids, carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. Um, like carbohydrates and lipids, the two that we've already talked about, nucleic acids have hydrogen and oxygen and carbon in them, but nucleic acids also have phosphorus and nitrogen. DNA is a polymer, so it is made up of many monomers called nucleotides, and those nucleotides are linked through um, covalent bonds. Those are really strong bonds that don't fall apart. Just like carbohydrates and lipids, nucleic acids are put together through dehydration synthesis, and they can be ripped apart through hydrolysis. So here's a picture of a nucleotide. Uh, nucleotides consist of three parts. Uh, they consist of a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. Now, depending on the type of nucleotide um, that you have, uh, these parts, the phosphate's always going to be a phosphate group, um, but the sugar and the base may change. Um, in DNA, for example, the sugar is deoxyribose, um, and the bases can be either A, T, C, or G, which we'll be talking about later in the slideshow. So these are the building blocks of a, of a nucleic acid. So when you bond a bunch of these together in long chains, you end up with a nucleic acid. Nucleic acids are used for um, storing and transmitting genetic information, sometimes called heredity, from one generation to the next. Um, now, most of us know that DNA uh, determines like your eye color and your hair color and other things like that. Um, but what we're going to be learning about um, over the next couple of units is exactly how it does that. And the way it works is that the code in the DNA basically is the instructions for building another one of the macromolecules, proteins. Okay, so you're basically made of protein um, along with some fat and some water. Uh, but the proteins that build you, the proteins that build you, the type of protein that builds you determines what you look like. So depending on the code that each person's DNA um, is, determines the type of protein that's made, which then eventually um, determines what you look like. Uh, making DNA and RNA, um, I already talked about a little bit, uh, but DNA talks about, it, it stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And make sure you know how to spell that, because you're going to need to be able to spell that on the test. Um, so it's deoxyribonucleic, all one word, acid. Um, and that's that name comes from the sugar. Um, and I already kind of mentioned it, it's deoxyribose. So remember that a, nu a nucleotide is made up of a phosphate a sugar and a base. And the sugar for deoxyribonucleic acid is deoxyribose. The other one that we're going to be talking about is RNA, which stands for ribonucleic acid. And just like deoxyribonucleic acid, it's named after the sugar. Ribonucleic acid sugar is called ribose. So here is just a little image of DNA and you can see that it kind of looks like a ladder that's twisted. And that is one of the ways that we remember what DNA looks like, and we call it a twisted ladder or a double helix, which means two spirals twisted together. DNA contains two strands of building blocks called nucleotides, arranged like a spiral staircase. Each nucleotide includes three parts, a phosphate group, a sugar molecule, and one of four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine. The sugar phosphate bonds form the double backbone of the molecule, the handrails of the staircase. But we find the genetic key to DNA in the steps of this stairway, the nitrogen-containing bases. 
These bases link up using hydrogen bonds in a very specific way. Adenine will bond only with thymine, A to T. Cytosine only bonds with guanine, C to G. While these basic pairings never change, the order of the pairs along each strand varies greatly from one species to the next. In this elegant design, we see how nature stores the instructions to build all living things. So now that we know kind of what nucleotides are and that they build DNA, what is DNA? DNA is a double-stranded combination of those sugars that Mr. Delbaccio talked about, as well as phosphates and the nitrogen bases. The double helix shape is sometimes called a twisted ladder, where the uprights, so the parts that would stand up on a ladder, are made of deoxyribosugar and the phosphates, and then the rungs, so the parts of the ladder where you would step in order to go up, those are made of the nitrogen bases. So if you look here, you have DNA that is twisted together, so the twisted ladder or the double helix, and if I were to take this and untwist it, it would look just like a ladder. And you can see that the bases are the rungs where you would step, and then these are called the uprights. And the uprights are the sugars and the phosphates. Now imagine if I could zoom in on just one piece of this ladder. It would look like this. And you can see each individual nucleotide. The phosphate, the sugar, the nitrogen base. The phosphate, the sugar, the nitrogen base. And this pattern just keeps repeating over and over again. Because these are the monomers that make up the polymer, meaning many monomers all put together. So the phosphates, um, those are the phosphate groups that are on the up and, uh, up and down parts of the ladder, um, form the backbone of DNA. And because these phosphates are negatively charged, they repel each other. And because of that, that's what actually causes the twisting of the DNA. As one phosphate repels another, they try to get away from each other and, and turn into that spiral staircase. Um, so the phosphates, uh, if you look back at this picture, are in between each of the ladder rungs. So notice that the phosphates only bond to the sugar. That's it. So they're attached to the sugars. Okay. And then the sugars are attached to the nitrogen bases. Um, so it goes basically phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar on both sides. You know, this gives you the double helix, two strands, one here and one here, double helix. The nitrogen bases are made up of four types. Um, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Now adenine and guanine are called purines because they're double ring sugars. If you look over here, here's adenine. It has the A. It's made up of a double ring sugar. So there's the whole sugar right there. Okay. Uh, guanine's the same way, made up of a double ring sugar. Thymine and cytosine are called pyrimidines. These are single ring sugars. And you can see just one ring there and one ring there. Um, so adenine and guanine, the purines, and cytosine and thymine are pyrimidines. And if you notice a pattern from the picture, A always bonds with T and G always bonds with C. So another way you can think about it is that adenine, um, since it's a purine, always bonds with thymine, which is a pyrimidine. So you can, always, you can basically say that purines always bond with pyrimidines because, again, guanine purine bonds always with cytosine. So a single ring always bonds with a double ring. Now... Chargoff was one of the scientists that worked with Watson and Crick. Watson and Crick are two scientists that are given credit for figuring out what the structure of DNA looks like. But in order to do that, they used the work of a scientist with the last name of Chargoff. And Chargoff's rule says that if you are told how much of one of the nitrogen bases you have in DNA, you can figure out the quantities of the rest of the bases. So for example, if you had a sample of DNA, let's say the DNA was 25% adenine. Well, adenine always bonds to thiamine. So if you have 25% adenine, that would mean you would have to have 25% thiamine. So 25 plus 25 is 50. That means half of the DNA has to be adenine and thiamine. That leaves you with another 50%. 
making up guanine and cytosine. So if 50% is guanine and cytosine, that means 25% of that is guanine and 25% of that is cytosine. And that will work every single time because that ratio is always one to one. For every adenine, you have a thymine. And for every cytosine, you have a guanine. And it was his rules that Watson and Crick used to figure out what bases paired which, with which other bases.